न्यूज फर्स्ट न्यूज लाइव विद फराज शौकत अली वेल हेलो गुड इवनिंग एंड अ वेरी वार्म वेलकम टू न्यूज लाइन जूम न्यूज लाइन लाइव इज नाउ डेज डूइंग इट बाय जूम uh owing to the growing numbers of the CV19 global pandemic and news first like everybody else is doing their bit to try and stem the spread of this uh painful uh disease painful more in terms of uh it being a nuisance now then this evening uh to discuss matters that are uh threatening to become equally painful uh we've got a person who's uh spent a lifetime in uh the plantations he prefers to be called a uh, plantation manager and uh, i prefer to call him as a plantation innovator he produces uh, perhaps the world's most expensive tea uh, right there in down south in sri lanka a uh, little off ahangama he's right here of course using the latest technology with no help from his grandchildren mr herman gunaratna very good evening to you mr gunaratna Good evening for us it's very nice to be with you thank you now then um uh, herman gunratna we we have uh, reports that you appear to have displeased the political leadership it says here i'm and i'm reading something out here it says here master tea maker herman gunratna with more than 45 years of expertise in the tea industry fears that the transformation from chemical to organic fertilizer will have a severe impact on sri lanka's biggest single export tea is that true yes it is and and why uh, why is the government going with both eyes open into such a dreadful abyss for us in the first instance i must tell you that the his excellency the president his intentions seem to be very honorable and uh, consequently uh, he is embarking on this transformation to organic fertilizer but i do feel that he has been ill advised about the manner in which the transformation is being made in that the government is seeking to do this transformation overnight and that is where the fault lies you know in regard to the tea industry there are three in, important components in regard to fertilization that's the usage of phosphates uh, uh phosphates potash and nitrogen now phosphates as you know are available in the natural form at the epavela rock phosphate uh, mine the uh, the nitrogen is the only uh, and but the potash has to be obtained from different sources but that is also natural it is only the nitrogen component that can be considered inorganic can uh, can be labeled as uh, uh, chemical now that is the very same ingredient that is necessary to enhance the production now all tea in sri lanka has been hybridized and uh, and uh, and bred so that requires a very high level of nitrogen and if you deprive the tea of nitrogen for us which it which is which is what is contemplated then of course you can expect a decline in crop by 50% now let me explain this to you at, at a little length now now the, uh, the nitrogen that is normally used is in the form of urea and that comprises of 46.5% nitrogen now to to uh, if you are going to use organic fertilizer to compensate for that organic fertilizer has only 2% nitrogen and to make it even simpler and uh, so that your viewing public can understand it for a hectare of tea you need 604 or 600 kilos of the fertilizer mixture approved by the tri now if you are going to if you are going to have an alternate method of fertilizing you need 80000 tons of compost uh, fertilizer to to come to that same level and that is and look at it from this point of view 
today we are going through a pandemic so the mobilization of the organic fertilizer resources cannot be done as easily as as it would have been had we not been having this situation so and even otherwise the component that enhances the crop is very simply nitrogen and if you don't have the required amount of nitrogen the in, the crop loss is inevitable and it's going to occur so that is really the issue before us however uh, there are uh, when we were on, on the task force we gave a proper we understand the need of the government and the honorable intentions of the president and there is no question about that however what we feel is that going about it in this way of overnight transformation would be detrimental not only to the industry the vegetables the paddy lands and all all other agricultural uh, products that are grown here now for that reason what we are advocating is we have given a proposal to the government to reduce the fertilizer usage by 50% right without detriment to the industry by various various uh, methods by which you can maximize the utilization of fertilizer so it is really uh, i mean we don't want to enter into any conflict with the government right i mean i have been working closely with the present president however i do feel that he needs to reengineer that he needs to clearly reengineer this decision so that we make the tra uh, transformation gradual that's it um you you say uh, that you don't want to really uh, be at cross hairs with uh, the president of sri lanka but i pose this question to you in the in an ambience where the present government have yeah. received a virtual two third majority in parliament where uh, the president of our country has uh, virtually untrammeled uh, powers uh, and he could probably move me 6 inches to the left and then 1 inch to the right if he so desired and uh, uh, and and therefore uh, our president appears to have a propensity to act in a certain stubborn ritualistic uh, almost militaristic fashion in which you know as you know in the military yours is not to uh, question why but to do and die and so in that respect our president seems to have a propensity to uh, to fall out with people who have a differing opinion is that what's happened to you and your uh, and the different advisers from the plantation sector no i cannot entirely subscribe to you though we have though we are no longer Uh, on what is called the task force i regularly talk to the president in fact i did so yesterday however he seems to be convinced that the movement towards being organic is of prime importance for the health of the nation now in that regard there is no proven criteria which says that the use of chemical fertilizer is detrimental to human health number 1 there are various uh, stories being discussed in different places but it lacks authenticity and it lacks any possible scientific criteria so and and, and you know all over the world all over the world for us only 1 or 2% of the area is under organic and in a country that is so dependent on tea and the income that we derive from tea to to uh, to to dislodge the dislodge the production process is i think a little too hasty and i am convinced that with proper persuasion which i hope to do in the form of this media discussion and so on because he he stands convinced that move the movement towards organic fertilizer is the best thing for the country now that's what people have told him but i am telling you something different and i am hoping to convince the president that the movement is okay but as long as it we as long as we do it gradually i i i i have a flip uh, side of an argument to this 
um, uh, with all uh, due respect to uh, uh, my president, your president, our president, uh, Gotabi Rajapaksa, um, and it is this. Since independence, since 1948, the average life, uh, life uh, span of a person uh, living in Sri Lanka is or was 52 years. Today, in 2021, I suppose these figures are from 2020, the average life expectancy is 78 years. In the intervening 26 years, or the 70 uh, odd years that we've had, uh, uh, 73 years of uh, independence, in between all this period, we've been using chemical fertilizers as well. So where's the logic? Where's the logic? Are the people ill and living till 78? Or are the figures somehow fudged somewhere? What's your response? No. My response to that is, in my understanding, one of the reasons that the longevity of the people of this country is as much as 78%, and you are saying that, is because we have a absolutely essential health service. We have doctors and medical services that are second to none in the world. And in regard to the contention that the usage of chemical fertilizers has caused any uh, uh, ill effects on the health of the population is amply demonstrated by your own figures that you're talking about. If the longevity has increased from 52 to 78 years, I think as a nation, we are doing quite well for us. And there is no, no necessity to, uh, to, uh, to disrupt the process of production in the quest of an of a impossible goal, of a faraway goal with, 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 with no, no scientific uh, uh, understanding to what we are doing. Now, now in your factory, uh, on your estate there, uh, producing this very expensive tea. Um, if your dryer machine isn't broken, if it's working this morning, why on earth would you send your maintenance man to repair it? Absolutely. There I agree with you. <laughs> why, if, it's, if it's working, why try to fix it? That's right. Exactly. So, so here we are. And also for us, you know, with great, great respect, we have other important, we have to, we need to pick our battles. Our primary battle now, in my opinion, is to read the country of this coronavirus. And when you entangle yourself with a controversy like the, like the banning of the fertilizer, you're creating another conflict which you have to resolve eventually. Eventually, you have got to resolve this issue. And in, if, you, if, you, if the government is thinking of, uh, util of utilizing organic fertilizer for us, the quantities are so enormous and the raw material to make it is almost not available. So it's your light whistling in the wind. I mean, somebody is telling the president something that he cannot achieve and which, we, which, will, which will eventually ricochet on him. Which is what I have been, I mean, when I spoke to him and I told him that this might have to be reconsidered, I must confess that he was not completely opposed to it. But he needs to be backed up by those people who are maybe advising him, maybe the, maybe the scientific opinion, they have to be quite emphatic in what they say, which is what we endeavor to do. No, we are, the, there are four people who are, appointed by me who are, participation, who are participating in this task force. We gave him a report, a comprehensively studied report. One, where the utilization of fertilizer can be reduced by 50%, right? If it is foreign exchange is an issue. Then how we can gradually transform it into organic fertilizer. So, so if we are... We, we, we have been acting as, a very res as very responsible members of the task force. We are in consonance with the president's thinking, but we don't want to see him eventually being labeled as a person who brought down the production in this country.
for more reasons than one. I personally don't want to do that. I'm in conversation with the master tea maker, master tea producer. Prefers to call himself a plantation manager, but he's here with us by Zoom from southern Sri Lanka, Mr. Herman Gunaratna. Now then, Mr. Gunaratna, you've told us the lowdown on trying to go organic immediately. So tell me, can you hazard a guess? When do our production figures start coming down? When do the potatoes stop, uh, farmers stop producing? When will their, uh, their output, their harvest come down? More importantly as well, how about the tea industry? When will the tea production come down? Well, for us to be very, very clear about this, there, has, there, there, there was some fertilizer available and they issued the fertilizer to, to us in very small quantities. So for the moment, we are just managing to keep our head above the water. However, the, the production is declining even now. But come January, February, March, I, I am like I like to hazard a guess that the production will come down by as much as 50%. And the consequences of that are going to be, if so facto, if 50% of the production is reduced, then 50% of the workforce will be rendered unemployed. That is in regard to the plantation sector. However, take the question of the smallholders. Now, the biggest 75% of the island's production comes from the smallholders. Most of them will lose their source of income, right? And they will be driven to almost uh, driven to poverty. Right now, they are okay. They, are, they, are make, they make a livelihood with their tea and they are thriving. But if the crop comes down by 50%, can you imagine the consequences that are going to occur to them? That is number, number two. And number three for us, more importantly, the British, with all their faults and foibles, they created the most enduring brand name for Sri Lanka, which is Ceylon Tea. Now, Ceylon Tea is known in the furthest flung, flung outpost of the world. Why? Has it endured for so long? Because, you know, I think God has blessed this land with a bountiful climate, with a perfect soil. So all those factors combine together to create the unique uh, taste, aroma, and uh, the, the liquors of the Ceylon tea. Now, if that is going to be affected, as it will be, with the, with the lack of fertilizer, then the, we are going to lose the international market. That is number one. And, and the other thing is, you know, grow, grow, if you lose 50% of the crop after going organic, one would um, inevitably expect a 50% increase in prices. That is not going to happen. And on that, I am completely firm. Because... The market for organic tea is very small and they hardly pay you anything to compensate for the loss in crop. So we are going to be left with a loss in crop, a loss in prices and more importantly, the loss in the global tea market. And when the blenders and packers shara, for us, obviously they to get their tea, they'll have to go to Vietnam, China or India. When they get used to that taste, it will, be, it will be very difficult for us to climb back and regain that market. For instance, we have lost the entirety of the Pakistan market. Pakistan was a principal buyer of Ceylon tea. Now they are buying it from Kenya. A reputed tea dealer told me that for one reason or the other, he was servicing the Japanese market. And because there was a small uh, uh, residue of, of, a, of a pesticide, that the Japanese market, which is a very discriminating market, went for a Kenyan blend, blend. And he says it's becoming now impossible to regain that market, even though we have cleared up the, the we have cleared up the, the 
incident of that uh, insect pesticide, pesticide residue so it is going to have uh, you know they are in these these the consequences are incalculable Mm. you know they cannot be calculated in monetary terms what 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 the what the long term loss is going to be so apart from you know i don't in any way want to enter into a conflict or uh, into into uh, an aggressive debate about this matter but i think we can all get together i mean we this is a matter there is nothing in the field of human conflict in my opinion that cannot be resolved with with dialogue now we have to create the dialogue now it's a dialogue of the deaf only one side is arguing this right so if we can create this dialogue by by means of these uh, the tv interviews and so on we will have to persuade the president uh, that a transformation to organic is good but for god sake give us a little more time to make it effective without loss Uh, with or without suffering the consequences of what I outlined to to you now. Now, plantation workers uh, already they they don't have a full week's work. Um, uh, I think if they're lucky, they may be working three days a week. Now, if yes. Now, if if uh, if there is further impairment or uh, impediment to the production of tea and its subsequent export, then. Uh, these plantation workers are going to be hit even more. Uh, it's a bit like hitting a person who's already fallen. Now, uh, you know, already they're paying their unions five rupees a day, and I don't think they're getting very much uh, a return on investment on that five rupees per day. So this will be the final nail in the coffin, really. And then, they, where do they go? Will they? Uh, they already the supermarkets in Colombo are full of former plantation workers. You are right for us. You are right. Now, now for that issue, we have also found a solution to that. You know, the 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 a solution to the issue of workers fleeing to Colombo. The task force has found that. You know, so what we have to do, we have to absolutely ensure that they get a minimum of six days work. Now, you cannot do that if the crops come down. that is that is that seems to me obvious so we have to sustain the crops at the present level but i feel that with a little management we cannot get 1.2 billion dollars but we can get up to 2 billion dollars by judicious use of fertilizer and more importantly for us the you know the plantation worker is beginning to get away from what they consider to what they what they consider to be a bonded labor situation mm. you know and uh, you know where where we compel them to work as manual workers on plantation yeah. now for us you take my word for it in every country in the world including kenya and in india they are going in for mechanical plucking we can't do that we've got very hilly terrain no 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 you don't need any literacy to do mechanical plucking i am doing mechanical plucking on a plot of my own plantation so what happens is when you when you engage in mechanical plucking you can pay the workers more you don't have the to reduce the number of days work and they also assume a, a certain dignity in they are no longer in that they are no longer manual workers they are machine operators i mean that is the universal pattern in regard to the production of tea all over the world right in kenya in in uh, new guinea in india in parts of india so 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 there are there are answers to all these problems right and those are matters into which the the task force comprising of myself and four of my colleagues went into and uh, you know the i tell you i tell you for us if we handle the tea plantations properly the small holders and the and the rpc sector we cannot get 2 billion we can eventually step this step this up to 3 billion us dollars in income per year right I, but i must tell you one thing now one of the there, there also was an element of overuse of fertilizer for us because of the fact that this fertilizer was given either subsidized subsidized or free 
Now, when anything is given free, you know, there is no necessity for people to be careful with it. Now, this is the most important point I want to make with, your, with our discussion. Any fertilizer that is applied when the pH value, it's a technical term, you may not understand it. It's a level of acidity. When it is below 4.5, there is no absorption. There is absolutely no absorption of fertilizer. So, what you need to do is to every plantation in Sri Lanka has to test its pH levels. Now, the small holdings agencies under Minister Patirana has done that. Has done that. And when the moment you do that, you just cannot apply fertilizer if it's below 4.5. So then you get the get the get the pH value up between 4.5 and 5.5. Mm -hmm. And then it starts absorbing. So with a little fertilizer, you can get a better result. So these are technical elements which I do not know whether the people who are advising the president are, are, are familiar with these factors. You know, we are the people who have spent a lifetime on the planet. Yes, but you are familiar and uh, you have access to uh, uh, the president. Um, so really, uh, we say to you, the people, the republic says to you, Herman Gunaratna, it's up to you to uh, go and see the president and make sure he has the proper information. No, I have endeavoured to do so. And I must tell you, from the discussions that I had with him, he seemed to be willing to re-engineer this. He seemed to be willing. Oh, that is the impression I got. So it needs a little more persuasion from the other players in the game. Unfortunately, uh, maybe that uh, they consider the president's uh, 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 attempt to go organic to be irreversible and they are not even engaging any kind of counter-persuasion. I think that is wrong. This is a democracy. Every one of us have the right to make a make our own point of view known and point of view known, and that is exactly what we have done. I will continue to do that, and I'm doing that in the form of this interview with you, not due to any kind of uh, animosity or anger or wanting to be controversial. In fact, that's the last thing I want to do. I want to see that the country's primary industry does not suffer and a well-intentioned president doesn't also suffer as a consequence of this. On that note, uh, Herman Gunaratna, thank you very much for your thought processes and we uh, wish you all the very best in trying to salvage what seems to be like a very serious situation indeed uh, because otherwise soon we may also have tea uh, sent uh, to, to the Essential Services uh, uh, Commissioner. And uh, that might even be an indication of far worse things. But Herman Gunradner, thank you very much for being on Newsline Zoom. On that note, let's uh, wish you a very good evening. And uh, as always, God bless you. News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali.